this is a mass of thanksgiving to God for the gift of motherhood, especially the mothers of this family of St. John. Today, they have gathered together to thank God for all the blessings they have received for the sin and even the ones they do not see. They are here to return gratitude to God for his fatherly care, love, protection, and even for the gifts of their families. As we celebrate the feast day of St. Monica today, they pray for growth in faith and prayer life in emulation of St. Monica. They also pray for all the children of this parish and other parishes, the youths living in alcoholism and other vices, that the good Lord will touch their life and they will receive this same conversion that happened in the life of St. Augustine. They pray for the needs of CWA members and their families. And finally, they also pray for all those in trouble and sufferings in the world time countries. In this mass, they remember all the CWA members that are sick. We pray for quick recovery. We ask for the mercy of God upon them and their families. Mrs. Michuki in this mass is thanking God for the gift of her family as she continues to pray for God's divine hand upon all the children of this family. She prays in a special way for a special intention, asking God, who sees both in secret and in open place, to grant her her heart's desire, especially the desire to continue to unite the family, to continue to bring the family together, to continue to bless the children and wherever they do in life, that they will seek the face of God, that their life will bring glory to God and the happiness to every member of the family. I remember Virginia's family as they continue to seek for God's mercy against the spirit of death in their family. They pray in this month that the good Lord will look upon their family with the eyes of mercy and deliver them from this spirit of sudden death. I pray for all those who have requested for our prayers and those whom we promise to be praying for, for God's mercy and blessings, and even for our private intentions, all of us gathered here. We pray that through the sacrifice we offer today, that the good Lord will continue to bless us with our heart desires especially the desire to live in accordance to our vocation as Christians. Behold a wise woman who has built her house. She feared the Lord and walked in the right path. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good evening, my dear sisters and brothers. Today, the Holy Mother Church celebrates the feast day of Saint Monica. We know the story of Monica. It wasn't easy for her. She waited patiently for the Lord. She did not give up. I pray for each and every one of you, especially our mothers, I don't know what you have been asking from God. I don't know how long it has taken. All I pray that through this sacrifice we offer this evening, the good Lord will give you that grace to persevere and wait for God to fulfill his promise in your life, in your family, in your children. Coming before the Lord this evening, we acknowledge the fact that in many ways, we have fallen short of the glory of God. I therefore invite us to examine our conscience 
ask God for pardon and forgiveness that you may be worthy to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to the Almighty God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who consoled the sorrowful, and who mercifully accepted the motherly tears of St. Monica for the conversion of her son, Augustine. Grant us through the intercession of them both that we may bitterly regret our sins and find the grace of your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and rests within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ, sorry, first reading Brethren, we beg and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you learned from us how you ought to walk and to please God just as you are doing, you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body, in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like heathens who do not know God, that no man transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord in, is an avenger in all these things. As we solemnly forewarned you, for God has not called us for uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. The word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord you just. Rejoice in the Lord you just. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord you just. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord you just. The Lord is King, let us rejoice. 
the foundation of his throne. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the face of the you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took their lambs and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lambs, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flask of oil with their lambs, and the bridegroom was delayed. They all slumbered and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Behold the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, 
give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out but the wise replied perhaps there will not be enough for us and for you go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was shut afterwards the other maidens came also saying lord lord open to us but he replied truly i say to you i do not know you watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour the gospel of the lord The Lord is good. One of the hardest moments we face in life as Christians is the moment we need to wait for the Lord. It is very difficult to wait. Sometimes our faith may carry us when we face problems, when there is this challenge in a family. It could be somebody who is sick. At the beginning of that sickness, we have the faith, we are looking up to God to do something and we wait for him even when your friends come around they will tell you courage god has not forsaken you and the person will continue to wait it could be in the life of our children that maybe some of them are not doing the way we expected and we expect them to change every day you keep on praying to the Lord. You offer masses. You say your rosary. You ask for the intercession of St. Monica. You pray for the novena of St. Rita. You do everything, yet nothing happens in the life of this person. Even in our marriages, sometimes things are not going the way we had planned it. And you are expecting that maybe in future things will be better. And from year to year, nothing seems to be changing. It remains the way it is. To make it worse, sometimes it goes to the worst part of it. You don't know what to do. So the period of waiting as Christians is very difficult. To be in the waiting room is like a pregnant woman whose period of delivery has reached and yet the baby is not coming. Sometimes the mother is tired being in the labor room and the nurses will be coming around telling you just wait. When I look at what it takes to wait for the Lord, I can say that the writer of today's gospel is a bit harsh to call the other five maidens foolish. Probably they waited and their oil could not sustain them and their lamps went off. So if that is the qualification and definition of what it means to be foolish, because you don't have the strength and the extra oil to wait for the Lord. I can tell you that 95% of us can be classified as foolish maidens because we don't have the extra oil. You and I can agree how long your patient holds you, how long you are patient when you are waiting for the Lord to do something for you and your family. 
that is the time our faith is tested. So when we look at this reading today, it is not by coincidence that it is chosen today we are celebrating the Feast of St. Monica. So I give you an example of St. Monica who waited for the Lord to do something in her family. The husband of St. Monica was not a Christian. St. Augustine led a rough life. He lived a loose life. He was everywhere in the streets, doing clubbing, doing all sorts of things. These things we see our children do. St. Augustine lived that life. And I can imagine how St. Monica was feeling, praying every day and waiting for the Lord to touch this person so that he will change. It was not a journey of one year. It was not a journey of five years or ten years. It took years before that prayer was answered. So St. Monica was in the waiting room and she never gave up. I am not a mother, but I have a mother. I know what our mothers pass through. Some of them, their hearts are heavy. If they open up and tell you what they carry, is it the problem of the family? Is it the problem of the children? Is it their own brothers? Many problems. Sometimes when they go to bed, they don't sleep. So today, I don't know that problem you are waiting for the Lord to solve in your family. I don't know how long that problem has lasted. I don't know whether your lamp of faith is going off. I don't know whether you don't have extra oil to keep on waiting for the Lord. Today's Mass will be a renewal. Today's Mass will renew your oil so that you will keep on waiting for the Lord. Because one thing I know is the Lord will surely do something in that situation. But how, I don't know. When, I don't know. Whether he will answer your prayer, I know he will surely answer this prayer. Therefore, to this mass is for you to renew your spirit, to continue to wait for the Lord. Sometimes it may look as if there is no solution. Sometimes it may look as if you are giving up. You don't need to give up. I remember the experience of Abraham and Sarah. Even when they were waiting for the Lord, and Abraham was around 90 something years, Sarah entered into monopause. And God said to them, At the appropriate time, I will visit you, and your wife will conceive. The scripture says, Sarah laughed and said, What is this man talking about? Conception is over. I have passed the age of conception. That is human knowledge. But before God, there is nothing like age of conception. And the, at the appropriate time, God visited them, and the Sarah conceived and gave birth to their beloved son, Isaac. I am saying this so that if you are at the stage of thinking that it is over, just know that it is not over. All you need is that extra oil to keep on waiting. The virtue of patience. All you need is to keep on renewing your spirit. Remember the promises of God. Remember how faithful God is. Even if it's your child that you feel that he is nothing to write home about, don't give up on him. Monica did not give up. Augustine was not the best at his youthful age. 
there is nothing impossibility before God. The book of Sirach says, it is possible for God to make a poor man suddenly and instantly rich. And he says that the heart of a king is in the palm of God. It doesn't take God any protocol to change a situation. Today, as I pray for you, I use all the mothers here as a point of contact to reach other mothers that are broken. There is nothing that breaks a mother than when she sees the son not doing well. Because the mothers go extra mile to make a sacrifice for their children. They want the best. Sometimes in a family, they deny themselves what can give them joy. They say that they don't need this. They see a beautiful cloth they're supposed to wear, they will not wear it for the sake of these children. And after making that sacrifice, and that child decides to do otherwise, it breaks their heart. Therefore, we pray for such people in that situation today. We ask for God to intervene in their life and touch the life of these children so that they can see the pain they are causing their mothers and they receive this conversion like St. Augustine. The Lord be with you. We can do the offertory now. Perhaps my mind is telling me that I have to do prayer of the faithful. I want five mothers, the mothers, five of you, please, prayer of the faithful before that offer three. I want us to present our intentions. Can we say the prayer of the faithful? You can say wherever you are. Prayer of the faithful. We talk to God. May we rise. Prayer of the faithful. In this prayer, we pray for ourselves, for those who are broken because of the challenges they are facing. We pray that the good Lord will bring healing to restore their hope so that they may not give up in life. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for all the children who are causing their mother's pain. We pray God to touch their lives the way he touched the life of St. Augustine. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for other mothers outside the world, even those of them who have given up and fear that that is the end. We pray that since there is not an impossibility before God, we ask God to restore that hope. Lord, hear us. We ask for the intercession of our blessed mother, the paradigm of intercessors, the mother that is full of grace and never allowed her children to be disgraced. We call upon her as we say, Hail Mary. Mother of grace, Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Heavenly Father, your children have presented their intentions and supplication before you. Some of them are here before you with eyes full of tears. Some are broken because of what they are passing through. May you bring healing. May you bring restoration in their life. And even those who are not here as a result of one challenge or the other, or those who are sick, but they would have loved to be here with us. May you visit them and grant them quick recovery and their heart desires. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord.
For my offense in Christ, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Look with favor, O Lord, on the sacrificial offering of your people and what they devoutly celebrate in honor of Blessed Monica. May they experience in his power to save through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is only right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer all sure sign of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lead us courage their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we to give you thanks as in exhortation we acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy their parties, get with pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, David Kamawa, our Apostolic Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy, Lord, on us, we pray. Have mercy on your children who have gathered around your table and even those who are not here, especially those who are sick. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and from by divine teaching, we are there to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to you, Apostles, and who is saying to all of us gathered here this evening, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy all of us who are called to the banquet of the Lamb, Lord. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting.
Son of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, run through my veins. Water flowing from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh God Jesus, hear me. Within your hoods, hide me. Let me not be separated from you. From evil enemy, defend me. At the hour of death, call me. And be me to come to you, that with your sins I may praise you for eternity. Amen. Whoever does the will of my heavenly Father is my brother and sister and mother, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the working of these divine sacraments enlighten and inflate us, Almighty God, on this feast day of Blessed Monica, that we may be ever fervent with holy desires and abound in good works through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go for proclaiming Christ by your life, for the Mass is ended. Happy feast day to you all. Have a blessed evening.